Hello, hello, good evening and welcome back. Um, so first of all, before we start, I would like to apologize for last night's inconvenience. I was having issues with my electricity here um, in my region and that's why it wasn't possible for us to connect and to have the corresponding class for last night. Um, and uh, based on the schedule that we have for this module, it seems that we're going to have to replenish that um, class basically at the end of, of the whole module, like when we're actually done with the classes. But, well, you know, it's always good to, to learn something else. And as we already know, most of the classes that we have by the end of the, of the course are, well, just complementary classes that may be related to other topics or summaries of what we have already worked in, uh, in the module. But anyway, um, so here we are once again. I hope all of you guys or well, the ones who are already here are doing amazing. Um, we're going to have uh, some time to talk about that in a minute. And we also have to talk today about, well, the topics we're going to be covering. So for tonight, we're going to continue talking about the passive with prepositions. If you, if you remember, we uh, were talking about that last week on, on Friday on how we're going to be using by or as a result when we are presenting um, the passive form on how or why something has happened. So for tonight, we're going to be learning on how to use that, but with the present perfect, um, in which case we're going to be using the present perfect structure and some other phrases like because of, through, or due to, which are other of the phrases we can use to talk about, well, outcomes of a situation that come from a different um, or from a different source. Um, we also have, well, a little bit of a pronunciation practice, something that will help us in, in the case of using auxiliary verbs. That is something very, very common in English. And uh, we're going to be practicing that, how to pronounce or how to eliminate the sound of some of the words or some of the letters from the auxiliary verbs, because that's something that tends to happen and will actually happen very, very often when we use um, those auxiliary verbs. So we have that, and we also have a conversation. We're going to be covering that as well. And probably if we have time, we are then also going to talk about um, how to offer possible solutions, like with the use of infinitive clauses and some of the phrases we can um, we can use. So this has to do a lot with solutions and also with um, advices. Remember that when you provide an advice, you are telling someone how you think a situation can be solved. Pero bueno, aparte de todo eso... Hi, good evening. Vamos entonces a, a iniciar, vamos a hablar, oh, otra de las partes importantes, quizá como lo primero que vamos a hacer esta noche será eh, resolver la sección 1, ¿verdad? Ya a este punto, pues deberíamos haber um, culminado, al menos en la clase de ayer, deberíamos haber culminado, ¿verdad? Parte del trabajo que tiene que ver completamente con la sección 1 y pues eso estaremos cubriendo también esta noche, los ejercicios de esta sección. Um, y alguna duda, pues que todavía pueda haber quedado, ¿verdad? Por ahí, ya que la sección 1 tiene varios ejercicios, entonces vamos a cubrir eso esta noche. Pero bueno, antes de hablar acerca de todo esto, I would like to hear you guys. I would like to, to know um, how are you? How are you doing at the moment? Or if you want to share, how was your weekend? Um, so let's start with Joel Pastran. And you can answer either of the questions. You can either answer... How are you right now? Or you can share how your weekend was. Okay, good evening, everyone. Hey, good evening. Um, my weekend was pretty common. I went to visit my father in Suchitoto and I spent two days there. And cool. that's all. Yeah, but still, Suchitoto is a nice place to visit, isn't it? Yeah, it's very hot. Oh, really? It's nice. There's okay. a lot of tourists there. Yeah, that's also pretty cool. Okay, great. Thank you, Joel. Now, how about uh, Evelyn, Mariela? How was your weekend or how are you doing at the moment? Hi, good evening. Hey there. I am doing great and my weekend was cool. 
I went to visit my father in San Miguel. In where, sorry? In San Miguel. Oh, in San Miguel, really? Yes, yes. Oh, pretty cool. So you were around my town. <laughs> okay. Yes, I'm from San Miguel, but I lived here about years, eight years ago in San Salvador. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's very common. A lot of people from, from the western or eastern regions, we tend to move. Actually, like two or three years ago, I was about to move to San Salvador, but then, but then you know, COVID happened and I ended up staying here. So pretty cool. Great. Um, how about um, Beatriz? Tell me, how was your weekend or how are you at the moment? Hi, good evening. Um, my weekend was very relaxing um, because I meet with my co-workers in a baby shower uh, in the breakfast. Uh, after that, I I went for a ma mas massage. Mas massage? I don't massage. Massage. Yes. Uh, okay. Very very relaxing. And after that, I eat a uh, seafood cocktail. Okay. Uh, yes. And my day was very, very hard uh, because I I work in a global company and we are opening a new a new club in Jamaica. Oh. And yes, and at will be uh, next week. Okay, pretty cool. Uh, yes, uh, very, very... Um, Excited? Yes, but uh, well. <laughs> okay, it sounds, sounds like, a, like a really cool job. Okay, very good. Yes. So I hope everything goes well with the new um, Jamaican branch of the, of the company. I hope to. <laughs> okay, Thank great. You. Thank you for sharing. Amazing. Now, how about you, Melissa? Um, how was your weekend or how are you doing at the moment? Hi, teacher. Hey there. Uh, my weekend was very great because I went to see a uh, play, basketball play. And I have a lot of friends that play basketball and I like it. And so I. I was uh, watching TV in my house with my brothers. Okay. So just things to relax yourself. Very good. Okay. Solo hay un detalle. Cuando hablamos acerca de... Um, cuando utilizamos el, el verbo play, solamente se hace, ¿verdad? Para hacer referencia a que alguien juega. Sí, el, el, el deporte. Cuando hablamos acerca de un juego, cuando vamos a ver, um, como en, en general en español lo conocemos, ¿verdad? Como un partido o un juego. Eh, juego sería game, ¿sí? Sería un basketball game. Y los de fútbol y los de, sí, los de fútbol mayormente son los que pueden ser eh, referenciados como matches, ¿sí? Matches. Entonces sería game para cualquier deporte casi, o sea, puede ser béisbol, basketball, um, incluso para el fútbol. Cuando ustedes dicen soccer, ustedes pueden decir, I went to see a soccer game y no hay ningún problema. Pero también esos pueden, pueden ser um, conocidos como matches, ¿sí? Matches, soccer matches, o the, the match was like this. Eh, la palabra match tiene varios significados, eso sí. O sea, no significa que es el único, la única aplicación. When we see this word match, puede ser utilizada... Bueno, no sé si ustedes conocen algunos de los significados que puede tener la palabra match. ¿Alguno de ustedes ha escuchado alguna vez para qué se utiliza match? No, si alguna vez han usado, han usado Tinder o han visto algo acerca de Cuando, Tinder. When we, we use this word to talk about something to make it emparejar. Emparejar, yeah. ajá. Yeah. So basically that's why we use it when we're talking about sports because when, when, what you want to see when you have two teams who are supposed to play or to know the same tactics or the same strategies for a game, you want to match them and see who is better. So that's why 
when we have um, team games, mayormente, cuando hablamos de juegos de equipos, that's when we're going to use the word match because we're putting them together so we can tell who is better than the other. Now, other of the uses uh, for the word match is the one when we are trying to, um, if you have seen it in, in English um, exams, when they say match the, let's say, signs on the left with the words on the right. So that means to join to some extent. Sí, o sea, también se puede utilizar para hablar acerca de unir, como crear un enlace, ¿verdad? Uh, o entrelazar, matching. Y eso así es por lo que les decía, si ustedes alguna vez han escuchado de esa aplicación Tinder, eh, cuando alguien dice, oh, hice match con esta persona, es porque hay... Eh, cosas en las cuales pudieron generar un enlace, ¿sí? o hay como eh, puntos en los cuales pueden enlazarse. So that's matching. And the third meaning, el tercer significado de match, eh, se refiere a los fósforos. Aquellos que tenemos en la cocina, esos también son matches. ¿sí? Así como lo envían. So, si ustedes dicen, I need a match en la cocina, entonces se referiría a verdad que necesitan un fósforo. Um, y si dicen, where are the matches or where the matches at? ¿Dónde están los, los fósforos? Sí, where the matches at? Okay, very good. So those are some of the things we have done. So that's pretty cool. I am glad to hear that you guys are doing great. And uh, well, before we get to talk about the different activities, because that's what we're going to start with tonight. Um, do you have any questions regarding the exercises of the section one? Like, I, I, I assume you guys have already completed them. Tonight, we're going to have the chance to check if we did it right, or if we had, or if we made any mistake, we are also going to have the chance to rectify um, that possible mistake. But if you have any questions uh, about any of these exercises, we can pay special attention to the ones that you guys are doubting on. Así que si alguna duda ha surgido, ¿verdad? Con cualquiera de los ejercicios, pues podemos eh, prestar verdad atención especial a, a esos problemas que puedan existir. Pero bueno, si no, vamos a, a iniciar, vamos a trabajar todos en conjunto con eh, las respuestas para cada uno de estos. Ya de esa forma dejamos la sección 1 completada y vamos a movernos libremente hacia las siguientes secciones. So the first one, the first knowledge checks, um, the instruction is very simple. Read the comments from customers in the restaurant. You may write um, your sentence with past participle or with nouns. Use the forms of the word in parentheses. So here we have some, as we mentioned, comments from customers in a restaurant. We already know that the main topic to deal with in section one is problems or issues, describing problems, describing things that didn't go as planned. So uh, we have also learned some words that we can use to describe these situations, the most common ones. Um, for example, here in exercise number one, we have uh, the first comment. This tablecloth table cloth isn't very clean. Eat and the word we have is a stain. So what would be the proper way to answer this one right here? The first um, item in this exercise. Uh, I would like to hear from Evelyn. What will be the phrase or the answer you will provide to this one? Evelyn? Okay, maybe she's not around. Um, how about Beatriz? What will be the answer you will provide to this specific um, item over here? The first one. Uh, is this tablecloth mm -hmm. very clean? Isn't very clean. Oh, uh -huh. clean. Um, y la respuesta sería? Uh, it's time. It has a stain. Yeah, we can go with that one. It has a stain. Recordamos, ¿verdad? Que stain se utiliza cuando queremos hablar acerca de manchas. O sea, o alguna, um, algún problema que se pueda notar 
en el color de algo. Stain puede, puede ser cualquier clase de tinta o cualquier, qué sé yo, um, mancha con, con una soda incluso. Eso puede generar un stain. Entonces, eh, cuando describimos cosas que tienen stains, será verdad cosas que eh, se encuentren manchadas. Y como les decía, principalmente eh, con lo que vamos a utilizar esta palabra, será cosas que tengan algo de cloth en el, o sea, algo de tela. ¿sí? Siempre que haya tela eh, incluida en el comentario, ahí entonces es muy probable que existan esta clase de stains. No significa que es el único lugar. Ustedes um, tal vez alguna vez han visto la palabra stainless en, en, las, en los sartenes. So when we talk about stainless or stainless steel, que es como lo más común, um, se refiere verdad a cosas que se supone que son um, inoxidables, o sea que, que no van a generar manchas eh, ni porque pase el tiempo, porque son cosas que han sido tratadas con químicos para que no se generen manchas. En los suelos también se puede llegar a ver stains. Siempre, por ejemplo, si um, tenemos el tipo de Ah, piso regular en la casa y se nos cae, ¿verdad? Um, qué sé yo, soda, café o algo que tenga dulce, puede quedar ahí una mancha y eso también se puede conocer como un stain. Entonces, casi que toda mancha que veamos puede ser reconocida como un stain. Ok, now, leak. Cool, we have another water pitcher. This one, um, Melissa, what would be the proper way to answer this item? So, we could, uh, could we have another water pitcher, this one? This one has leak. Has a leak. Okay, very good. This leak. one has a leak. Yes. Okay, so we're going to take that one. We're going to check it in a minute. Um, Joel, from the third one. The table looks pretty dirty. The wood... Um, the table looks pretty dirty. The wood is, um, is scratched. It's is scratched. It's is scratched too. Ahí solo que hay un detalle, hay un problema, ¿verdad? Con, con la escritura, en el, en, con el verbo. Yeah, there's a typo. Yeah, there's a one typo because it's missing a, a C. But still, we already know that it's a scratch. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is a scratch too. Very nice. So we're going to check that in a minute. Um, now, from Beatriz, once again, we're going to take now... Um, the, oh, wait, no, Evelyn is back. So we're gonna take now the answer from Evelyn. Evelyn, for item number four over here, the waiter needs a new shirt. The one he's wearing, and the word we can use is tear. So what will be the proper answer for this item over here? Evelyn? Oh, okay. It's understandable. Thank you very much, then. Um, so we're going. I'm going to provide this one, and the one he's wearing. We can go different uh, with different routes. Remember, uh, we can say the one he's wearing is torn, uh, or we can go with has a tear. Has a tear. The one that mentions in in present perfect that the item has been torn. Okay. Uh, number five. Could you bring me another cup of coffee? This cup, um, Beatriz, what will be the proper answer for this? We are going to be using the verb chip. So could you bring me another cup of coffee? This cup? This cup has chip. Okay, we can go with that. Or probably it would sound a lot more natural if we say it's chipped. Is chipped, ¿sí? Is chipped. Significa, ¿verdad? Que está astillada. This cup is chipped. All right. And then we have the walls really need painting. And the ceiling. Um, Joel. Yes, uh, is damaged. Is damaged. Very good. Thank you very much, also, Evelyn. Teacher, uh -huh. the, the number four is is not has a tear the right answer is storm did you try with has a tear yeah oh and didn't work yep that's okay. the one thank you very much then okay so there we have it so those are the proper answers for this section or for um 
this exercise. It's 1.2 in the, in the first section, and it will be, it has a stain, has a leak, is scratched, is torn, is chipped, or is damaged. Very nice. Thank you very much, guys. Now we're going to move on to the next one. Remember, we do this just in case we have had any issues, any problems when we were solving them, and now we can clarify uh, the, how the proper answers were supposed to look. Okay, so here we have a listening exercise, and for this listening, normally they don't work over here, so we just have to follow the link for the audio. Um, so hopefully it's gonna work. Yeah, it's it's loading. So you guys are supposed to be Listen able to, to three Sorry, you guys are supposed to be able to hear um, the situations, and we're going to be solving them based on the audio I just mentioned. So let's listen to it one time um, in full, and then if we have to, we're going to come back to it to listen to the different sections. Customers return an item they purchased. What's the problem? Take notes, then complete the chart. One. Can I help you? Yes, I bought this briefcase here last week, but there's something wrong with the lock. I can't get it to close properly. Let me see. Yes, I see what you mean. The lock seems to be jammed or something. No problem. I'll get you another one. Sorry about that. Two. Excuse me. Yes? I wonder if you could take a look at these shoes I bought here. They're pretty new, but they seem to be falling apart. Hmm, let me see. Yes, this doesn't look right. The stitching is coming out. How long did you say you've had them? Only about a month. Here's the receipt. Hmm, yes. Well, let me exchange these for you. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Three. Excuse me. Yes, how can I help you? You see this shirt? I bought it here a few weeks ago, but the first time I washed it, the color changed. It went from bright red to light pink. How did you wash it? Well, I just tossed it into the washing machine with my other clothes. What temperature did you use? I usually wash my clothes in hot water, so I guess hot. Well, did you check the washing instructions? Um, maybe not. Well, you see here on this label, it says wash in cold water only. Uh-huh. So I'm really sorry, but since you didn't follow the washing instructions, I can't really do anything for you. All right. So have you ever had any problems like the last guy? Uh, like, have you ever ruined a piece of clothing because you didn't follow instructions? No. No, you have never? Okay, very good. So we have three problems. Remember, um, the first one, what was the item mentioned in the first issue? Do you guys remember what was the item? Daniel, for example, did you pick up what was the item that they mentioned in the first um, problem that we heard? Teacher, I have one question. Yes, tell me. Uh, I, I think uh, yo estaba este en el, quiero ya le digo, en el, en el, en el curso de avanzado, preavanzado, creo que es, pero no sé si es inglés preavanzado módulo 2. Uh -huh. En ese es el que estamos ahorita, teacher. Sí. Exactamente. Uh -huh. Se supone que ya, ya lo había pasado, ¿o no? No, 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 no. Lo que pasa es que este... Hace poquito habíamos iniciado con otro, otro teacher y no sé qué pasó. ¿Seguro que era otro? ¿Seguro que no soy yo? No, si con usted primera vez que tengo clase. No, si soy yo. La semana pasada ah, iniciamos, ¿no? Quiero ver. ¿Qué, quitó el pelo, pues? No. Sí, eso. A la puchita. 
Puede, puede que eso sea no. así. <risa> sí. What a big change. Lo, con... <risa> really? lo conocía yo. Man. No, just imagine if I, if I shave my beard. Dude. Ay, por chicas, teacher. Vaya, no, pero, pero quiero sí. ver aquí. Pero sí, usted va. Sí, claro. No, Pérenme, de hecho, pero... saben que ayer, de hecho, hubo un momento confuso cuando ajá. enviaron un mensaje temprano que, ajá, Paola creo que fue la que envió el mensaje diciendo que ella... Pero fue la energía, ¿eh? That's true. No, pero no, temprano, temprano, o sea, en la, en la tarde, mm. ella mencionó que ella se iba a encargar, pero o sea, se refiere a encargarse no necesariamente como facilitadora, sino encargarse de todas las situaciones administrativas o de las dudas que ustedes puedan tener. Entonces, yo no quise escribir nada porque pensé que, o sea, iba a ir contradiciendo lo que ella mencionara, ¿verdad? Pero eso, por un momento creí que podía llegar a ser complicado, o sea, porque no es necesariamente que se ha cambiado nada, sino que simplemente es que, o sea, no se había asignado eh, aún quién iba a estar encargado de, del grupo en cuestiones administrativas, pero no, mm -hmm. yo, yo soy el mismo del miércoles pasado. Vaya, Ticho, te doy una consulta. Es okay. que ahorita estamos en el, estamos en el, según veo yo, se está desarrollando el, 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 el capítulo 1, ¿verdad? Sí, estamos haciendo los ejercicios del capítulo 1 para dejar ya cerrado todo y que no queden como dudas con, las, con la, los ejercicios que hay disponibles. Vaya, ahorita estamos desarrollando, quiero ver, quiero ubicarme. Ese el sería uno. el 1.3. 1.3. Yes, 1.3. Ah, voy sí. Ya me ubiqué, teacher. Ay, okay. Dios mío. Va. It's okay, no hay problema, ¿sí? No hay <ríe> problema. Están burlando de mí ahorita. No, no, para nada. Suele pasar, <ríe> créanme. Aquí, en, aquí que... en mi casa, aquí en mi casa, digo yo. Ah, no, fíjense que a, a una amiga mía le pasó hace unos días, eh, ella se llama Liliana, entonces, uh -huh. y por lo general, ella no, no usaba lentes en las clases, o sea, también cor con corporativo, y hubo un día uh -huh. que se puso lentes y creyeron que era otra, <risa> y todos como, ¿quién es ella? Y, o sea, no solo uno, sino que fueron varios estudiantes que creían que habían cambiado teacher, pero no. Sí, hombre. Va. Bueno. Okay, pues, teacher. No problem at all. All right. So... Démosle, démosle, porque yo acabo de, acabo de entrar. No hay problema, sí, sigamos entonces trabajando con esto. So the first problem is very simple. Remember, here I just want to explain one thing um, in case you don't remember. When we use the auxiliary does, there is no need for us to use an S at the end of the word uh, or the verb in third person. So here we're only going to stick to lock doesn't work. Sí, esa es una cosa que cada rato se confunde las personas o porque... Como se dice, ¿verdad? Cuando usamos tercera persona, we have to add an S or, um, well, at the ending of every single verb. But when we are using this auxiliary, when we're doing um, negative sentences, we're not going to be adding an S at the end. We only are going to use the main verb as it is, as the base form. All right, moving on, we have, will the store exchange it from the listening? Do you guys remember if the store mentioned if they were going to exchange the briefcase or not? Beatriz, were, yes or no? Uh, sorry, teacher, I don't remember. You don't remember? Okay, um, and we take from the chat that yes. Uh, Evelyn mentions that yes, the store, actually the, um, the lady who was attending The issue, she mentioned that, yes, the store was, was going to exchange the briefcase because the lock wasn't working. Okay, what about the second problem? What was um, the item mentioned in it? Do you remember, Melissa? Uh, no, teacher. Only the problem number three. Okay, so la tres le prestaron atención. Um... <laughs> So what about you, Joel? I think you remember, right? Yes. Uh, was shoes. Were shoes. Yes, shoes. So the item, very simple. We're going to leave it as shoes. Okay, what was the problem? Was, was it that they were coming apart or was it that they were falling apart? Falling apart. They are falling apart. All right, very good. So the shoes were falling apart. Uh, and is the store going to exchange the shoes? And here is very simple. Yes, once again, they mentioned that they were going to exchange um, the item. 
All right, remember, when we talk about exchange, estamos hablando acerca de um, cambiar, ¿verdad? De hacerles, o sea, una retribución de su, um, su artículo. And here, once again, we have some typos because it's not this the proper way to, um, to spell exchange. Sí, porque esto dice exchange. It's not that the proper way. The proper way is like this, exchange. All right. No, problem number three. Ahora sí, entonces, Melissa. What was the item mentioned in problem number three? Um, I think that was a shirt. Okay, so we're going to try with shirt. With shirt only, not t-shirt, but shirt. All right, and what is the problem? The, the color change. The color change, very good. And is the store going to do anything? Is, are they going to exchange the product? No. No, because the guy didn't read or follow the instructions, the washing instructions. Yes, and unable. Yeah, the store cannot do anything about it. All right, very good. So we have all the problems or, or all the items properly answered. Nice. So moving on, we're now going to jump into 1.8, which is um, the one in which we are going to be using the words or the different verbs to describe problems with um, techno technological devices. Remember, one thing to keep in mind here is that uh, we're not only going to use these terms only once, we can use it more than one time. Um, so to complete the sentences, choose the correct form of keep plus the correct form of the verbs. Muy bien, entonces aquí vamos a utilizar algunas de estas frases más de una vez. Así que no es que necesariamente, ¿verdad? Tenemos que usarlas solamente una vez. All right. Eh, for the first one. My computer is driving me crazy. Id, what will be the proper phrase you would use? Um, Daniel. It will be keep going dead, keeps breaking it down. Keeps crashing. Keeps crashing? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to go with that one. Keeps crashing. How about number two? The bottoms in the remote control always stick. They, um, what will be the proper one, Melissa? Or the one you will pick? Oh. Um. Maybe breaking down. Okay. Keeps breaking down. Here I'm going to give you a clue. Aquí tenemos el pronombre they. See? They. And when we use keeps, remember that keeps is going to go with singulars. Yes. So it has to be a keep. So what will be? Uh -huh. We only have to keep. Keep going dead or keep jamming? Uh, keep jamming. Keep jamming. All right. So we're going to take that one. Um, now, moving on. Dad used CD player often jumps to another song. Eid, what would be the right answer in this case? Joel. It's skipping. It's skipping. Keeps skipping. Very nice. Thank you very much. Um, our new flat screen TV has a problem. Eat. What would be the right one or the one you will pick, uh, Beatriz? What does the TV keep on doing? It um, keep, keep freezing. freezing. All right, it keeps freezing. Well, now for a TV, that will be a really weird problem, but we're going to take it. So it keeps freezing. For now, we're going to take that one. Nice. Um, number five. Those old cell phones never work right anymore. They, what would be the, your answer to this question? Now, uh, I'm going to take yours from the chat. Evelyn, what will be the one you will pick? Keep going dead. All right. So we're going to take keep going dead. Thank you. Um, number six. Sometimes Ed can't use his solar power calculator. Eat, um, Daniel, what does the calculator do? What, what do you think the calculator is doing? Eat, get a better. Mm -hmm. 
it keeps going there. All right. Uh, the only the, the only thing is no keeps keeps. Uh huh. We have R -S. Keep. So yes, una que tenga keep. Uh, yes, keeps going there. Oh, keeps abajo, going dead. This one over here. All right, keeps going dead. Thank you. Great. All right, so keeps going dead. Um, number seven. My computer screen needs to be replaced. It, um, that one goes for, for whoever would like to answer it. Quien quiera contar la respuesta para esta. My computer screen needs to be replaced. It, thank you, keeps freezing. All right. So it keeps freezing. Thank you very much, Evelyn. And Joel, so you take the last one. Um, the answering machine never picks up any calls. It, it keeps going dead. Keeps going dead. All right. Ahora vamos a checar qué tal nos fue. Y solamente tenemos 12 puntos de los 20. Así que tenemos algunas cuantas que no están eh, contestadas de forma correcta. Vamos a ver. So in the first one, my computer is driving me crazy. It, creo que la opción apropiada para esta, según recuerdo, era keeps um, breaking down. Sí, keeps breaking down. All right. So the next one up, uh, our new flat screen TV has a problem. Yes, it can happen that a TV um, can freeze, but normally when TVs are having issues, we will be saying that once again, it keeps breaking down. Sí, otra vez, o sea, se está arruinando. So keeps breaking down. Um, now, for number six, sometimes Ed can use his solar power calculator. And once again, and once more, we're going to take keeps breaking down. A ver, breakdown es una de las, de las frases más comunes que se van a utilizar en inglés cuando queremos describir problemas que estamos teniendo. Y ahora sí, ¿verdad? Ahora sí las tenemos todas ya correctas. Porque cuando... Así como el get, como la palabra get puede ser un, un verbo comodín, así funciona. El decir que something broke down, it can refer to basically anything. Uh, even if you have a relationship, you can say that it, it was um, breaking down and we didn't relate to one another as before. Así que breakdown, o sea, es, es algo que en realidad eh, se puede describir para, o se puede utilizar para describir muchas, muchas situaciones. Okay, so breaking down will be the first one. Uh, then we have keeps jamming as the second one. Um, in the third one, keeps skipping. Fourth one, keeps breaking down once again. Fifth one, keeps going. Oh, wait, keep going dead because we're talking about the old cell phones. So it's a plural noun. Uh, then we have keeps breaking down for the calculator. Um, for my computer, once again, keeps freezing. Um, and the answering machine is keeps going dead. All right, so those are the ones we um, needed to solve in this area. Now, from the last two, we're only going to solve one. De los últimos dos ejercicios, solo vamos a resolver uno. Porque si no... Sí, dígame. Repítame la respuesta, please. All right. <laughs> y justo por eso les iba a decir que vamos a responder solamente el uno más, porque si no, ahí sí, ¿verdad? Ya sería demasiada la copia. Ok. Hey, no. <laughs> Está bien. No. En ese sería, keeps breaking down for number one. Keep breaking down, number one. Yes. Uh -huh. Keep jamming for number two. Keep jamming, ok. Yes. Keep skipping for number three. Keep, espera, espera, espera. Keep skipping. Ah, ok, ok. Keep skipping. Um, keeps breaking down for number four. Okay. Keep going dead for number five. Keep going, keeps con S al final. No, keeps. keep, keep, keep going dead. Yeah, going because dead. It's, it's a plural. Yeah, keep going dead. Okay. okay. Um, then for number six, it will be keeps breaking down because keeps we're talking about the down. calculator. Okay. Yes. And number seven, it will be keeps freezing. Keeps freezing. Okay. Keeps freezing. And the last one would be keeps going dead. Keeps going dead. Keeps going dead, yes. Okay. okay, teacher, thanks. You're very welcome. So I okay, groups, I don't know if you guys have ever done that, but there are some groups in which they, I mean, every single um, activity, they're always um, sharing the answers. I haven't seen you guys doing it, but many, uh, many of the teams, they tend to do that. All right, so with this one, Vamos a resolver el último, este que es un tanto más complejo, lo vamos a dejar así, así que para que 
um, se compliquen más. Y además porque este me parece más interesante porque vamos a estar leyendo todos juntos. So we have um, this reading section. I would like to know if you guys are able to, to, to see it. If not, I'm going to, I think I'm, I'm rather going to download it and share it. Y vamos a estar leyendo. La única persona que se va a poder um, ausentar de la lectura será Evelyn, porque desde hace rato ya comentó, ¿verdad? Que está teniendo problemas con, um, con la, la conexión. Ahora bien, vamos a ir entonces dividiéndonos la lectura. Sí, creo que ahorita con ese tamaño sí podemos verla todos. Um, I'm going just going to read the first um, paragraph. Y ahorita no les voy a asignar directamente quién va a seguir, sino que vamos a dejar a ver ustedes, sí, vayan, vayan tomando el, el micrófono. Cuando uno de ustedes termine, vamos a ir leyendo un párrafo cada uno, otro de ustedes entonces toma verdad la línea que, que se quede. El primero que enciende el micrófono, el primero que siga leyendo, va a terminar de leer ese párrafo. All right, so I'm going to start with the first one. Skim the article. Why do you think the show is called um, Trading Spaces? How fast can a home remodeling project be completed? About 48 hours. At least that's the basis of the popular reality show called Trading Spaces. Two sets of neighbors sweet home for today and redecorate a single room in their neighbor's home. Both, both teams have uh, the help of a passenger, a uh, handyman, and budget of 100 at the end of the second day. The host re reveal reveals the room, reveals the room, to the homeowners, homeowners, homeowners mm -hmm. who usually say, wow, that's great. Sometimes, however, they get upset. All right. Okay, voy yo. Okay. <laughs> Is this really TV realistic? Up to a point, the designer actually get videotapes of the rooms and plan out every step beforehand. Even the materials are purchased in advance. It's the same, same at home. One designer said, if you don't want a project to last two months, you need a game plan. Everybody think Trading space is totally real, but trading space is totally not real. That paragraph continues up here. Say a woman who um, appeared, appeared. appeared on the show. If we didn't do something on camera, right we have to do it again you become an actor so how happy are the homeowners after the remodeling generally the participants are thrilled but one couple of portland oregon hated their new room their, com com their comfortable but cramped family room was transformed into a dark movie theater Right, who's gonna take the next one? Me, okay. again. Okay. But you didn't see that one on the show. You didn't see me crying, said Shannon Pitts. They edited, they edited it out the show. Okay. It really was a non-functional room, says Scott Pitts. All you could do was watch TV. So they found themselves re remodeling their own space again. But and Evan, I'll, okay, go uh, ahead, go ahead. But Evan thought uh, Shannon and Scott didn't like the why their fam family, family mm -hmm. rooms uh, 
turn it out, uh, they'll, they'll be on the show again. Why? They love the co the redecorating. Co redecorating their neighborhood place. All right, very good, very, very good. Thank you guys very much. Muy bien, so this one, this uh, reading is about a TV show in which people um, get the opportunity to remodel the, well, a space in their neighbor's house, not necessarily in their own home, but uh, from their neighbors. So we are going to answer some of the questions um, that are taken from the experience or from the, um, well, the explanation we got from the show. The first question is, the participants of the show get assistance from experts. And do they get assistance from experts? True, false, or not given? Um, Daniel, do they get assistance from experts? Leyendo estoy ahorita, teacher. <laughs> Leyendo estamos todavía. Sí, hombre. Bueno, quiero si, ver. si gustan, vamos a ver. Voy a darle una lectura rápida y sé que hay unas palabras acá que pueda que sean nuevas para algunos, así que vamos a tomarnos un pequeño momento, ¿verdad? Sabemos que el vocabulario también es bien importante. So, here I go. Um, how fast can a home remodeling project be completed? About 48 hours, uh, at least that's the basis of a popular reality TV show called Trading Spaces. Two sets of neighbors switch homes for um, two days and redecorate a single room of their neighbor's home. Both teams have the help of a designer, a handyman, and a budget of $1,000. Ok, aquí hay un par de detalles entonces. El handyman, cuando hablamos de un handyman, es una persona que puede hacer casi cualquier clase de reparación. Si hablamos de fontanería, electricidad, um, cosas que tengan que ver con construcción. A handyman can basically do anything. So when you hear um, somebody mention that they are a handyman, it means that they can repair almost anything in a house. Ok, a budget, una vez más, eh, una palabra que pueda que sea nueva. Budget se refiere, ¿verdad? A el presupuesto que ustedes puedan tener. And one thing that is very important, every time you see this sign, cada vez que ustedes vean este signo de acá, o cualquiera de los signos que representen dinero, si ustedes ven la E que representa los euros, o la Y que representa los yenes, you're going to say the, the amount, in this case it's a thousand, uh, and then you're going to mention the title or the name of um, the currency. So here it's a thousand dollars. If it was an E representing euros, then I will have to say a thousand euros. If it was a Y representing the yens, I will have to say a thousand yens. So that's a very important thing to have in mind. Every time you find um, these symbols or these signs, you have to mention also the currency they represent. All right, moving on. At the end of the second day, the host una palabra que pueda que también sea com compleja, host, se refiere a un presentador. En el caso específico, ¿verdad?, de, um, de este, este contexto, sería un presentador o un anfitrión. En, pues, por ejemplo, si ustedes eh, visitan a um, cualquier familiar o van a una fiesta, and the person who invited you there, that will be the host of the party. So the host reveals the rooms, to the homeowners. Homeowners serían los propietarios del hogar, ¿verdad? Who usually say, wow, that's great. Sometimes, however, they get upset. Upset es una palabra que usamos para hablar de cuando, uh, para referirnos a que alguien se molestó. Upset. All right. Um, is this really uh, TV realistic? Up to this point, the designers actually get videotapes of the rooms and plan out every step beforehand. Beforehand se refiere a en avanzado, ¿verdad? Beforehand. Siempre que ustedes quieran mencionar algo que lo hayan hecho, pues, con preparación antes de eh, enfrentarse, de hecho, al problema, that is something you have done beforehand. All right. Um, so... Uh, beforehand, where is it? Oh, even the materials are purchased in advance. It's the same at home, one designer said. If you don't want a project to last for months, you need a game plan. A game plan, aquí no necesariamente va a ser entendido, ¿verdad? Que es que van a jugar, sino que se refiere a que cuando ves que vamos a hacer algo que puede ser complicado, si no queremos que tome mucho tiempo, we have to plan ahead. We have to know what we're going to do and have some steps we're going to take in order to achieve the goal. 
Now, everybody thinks trading spaces is totally real, but trading spaces is totally not real, said a woman who appeared in the show. If we didn't do something on camera, right, we had to do it again. You become an actor. So how happy are homeowners after their remodeling? Generally, the participants are thrilled, but one couple in Portland, Oregon, hated their new room. Their comfortable but cramped family room was transformed into a dark movie theater. All right, so here, um, cramped, cuando hablamos de algo que está cramped, se refiere a algo que básicamente no tiene tantos espacios, o sea, un lugar que está un tanto, ¿cómo podemos decir? Como, no necesariamente hacinado, pero algo que está um, difícil de transitar, o sea, cramped siempre se va a referir a algo verdad que está tal vez como ya muy lleno de cosas. If you have a lot of things in your room, your room can be can become cramped. Okay, but you didn't see that on the TV, on the show. You didn't see me crying, said Shannon Pitts. They edited it out of the show. It's really it really was a non-functional room, said Scott Pitts. All you could do was watch TV. So they found themselves remodeling their own space again. But even though Shannon and Scott didn't like the way their family room turned out, they'll still uh, be on the show again. Why? They love re redecorating their neighbor's place. All right, so turn out. Una vez más, este sería un phrasal verb. Cuando hablamos de algo que está turn out, se refiere a los resultados. Anytime you, you see or you want to... Um, to ask someone how something went or the, the result of something, you can use um, this phrasal verb. ¿sí? Pueden preguntar, por ejemplo, por algún examen, por alguna fiesta, alguna cita que alguien va a tener. You can ask with turn out. So how did the party turn out? How did the date turn out at the end? Um, so yeah, and when we talk about places here, we are referring to the house. Uh, in English, it's very common that we use the word place to talk about the house. Um, you can say, for example, let's go to my place. And that means let's go to my house. Um, so very important to know that. All right. Now we, oh, sorry. Now we go to the questions once again. So the first one, the participants are uh, of the show. Get assistance from experts. And do they, Daniel? For me, it's true. True, right? Because they mentioned that they get um, some help from designers, handymen, and they also get a budget. But the designer and the handyman are the experts. All right. The projects sometimes take months to complete. Is this true or false, Beatrice? It's true. All right, so we're gonna take it. So you you say it's true, great. Um, many participants redecorate their homes after the show. Joel, do they? Is it true, is it false, or is it necessarily not given? Probably not given. Yeah, they don't mention that. They only mention the experience of the pits, but they don't mention um, any other of the participants. All right, from Evelyn. Um, the people who appear in the show are actors. Is that true, false, or not given? False. Thank you very much. Yes, it is a false statement because people, they say that they do not want to become uh, actors. All right. Number five. Reality shows aren't always entirely honest. True, false, or not given. Um, Melissa. Mm, not given. All right, so not given. And uh, we're going to go with the pits are no longer friends with their neighbors. True, false, or not given. Um, Daniel? Quiero ver, teacher. It really was a non functional room, said Scott Pitt. All you called was watching TV. So they found so a bit more in there. Ah, uh, quiero ver, teacher. This, uh, the pits are no longer friends with their neighbors. 
no sé. Not giving lo vamos a poner. Ok, so we're going to go with not giving. All right. So... Hey, cabal ese de, de. Not <laughs> giving. Not giving. They don't mention if they're friends or not. They only mention mm -hmm. that um, they love redecorating their neighbor's place, but they don't say if they're still friends or not. All right. So here, the projects sometimes take months to complete. Well, some projects may, but the projects mentioned in the show, they normally take, uh, and here, about 48 hours. Sí, o sea, alrededor de 48 horas. So it will be a false statement because they normally take about 48 hours. Sí, algunos proyectos puede que sí, ¿verdad? Pero los que se mencionan en este, um, en este programa Trading Spaces, it will only take 48 hours to complete it. And for this one, reality shows are often, uh, aren't always entirely honest. Now, what will be another or what will be the one you will place as the answer, Joel? True. Okay, true, because many of the reality shows often um, go ahead and they play or they present a different reality or a different face to what they're actually doing, um, you know, with the people that take part in, um, well, their shows. All right, so that basically sets up everything with um, section number one. Now, we only have a couple minutes more to complete the rest of the class. So we're going to be talking with about this. Remember, this is the topic we had last Friday. Um, we're going to, to mention some of the, of the examples we have over here and how or when we're going to use um, the present continuous passive. So here we have some of the examples. Remember, when we use a passive voice, what we're doing is that we're placing the importance of what is done, not necessarily on who is um, carrying away that action, but the action itself. The who is relevant, yes, but it's not the main part of the sentence. And that is why normally when we use um, the passive voice, we're going to have the verb be being used because there is when you're going to explain the situation or what is happening and then you will have to use a connector phrase or a responsibility phrase as some people refer to it when you are going to then provide the um well the actual noun or the actual um author of that specific um action so in the first example we have, the air is being polluted. That is the action. Sí, eso es lo que, lo que ha sucedido. The air is being polluted. Sí. Pero lo importante no necesariamente, ¿verdad? Como en la mayoría de oraciones, va a ser el sujeto, sino que esta parte de acá, el hecho de que el aire está siendo contaminado. The air is being polluted. Then we have this responsibility phrase or connector phrase in which we state by whom, like who is carrying away this uh, action. And here it would be not necessarily a person or a group of people, but um, well, unanimated things. In this case, it would be by fumes from cars and trucks, but they are the ones responsible for the pollution of the air. Of the air. Um, for the second one, the city streets are being damaged once again. This is the part that is important for us to know. And that is why it is at the beginning of, of the sentence. Now, um, as a result of heavy traffic. Aquí, una de las cosas que se da bastante es um, la de las clases o las divisiones que pueden haber en, o las partes que pueden estar, ¿verdad? En una oración. Si ustedes, por ejemplo, en una manifestación vieron algo como esto, the air is being polluted, o sea, esa sería una oración completa, ¿sí? Lo que sucede es que, o sea, lo que, la, la oración carece de un sujeto, o al menos de un sujeto que esté llevando a cabo la acción. Si, por ejemplo, dijera, the fumes are polluting the air, ahí sí, ¿verdad? Tenemos ya el sujeto que está llevando a cabo la acción. Pero en este tipo de oraciones no necesariamente, sino que lo que se menciona es la acción misma. ¿Qué es lo que ha sucedido? Luego, 
si se desea, es cuando se incluye esto. Y esto no todo el tiempo se va a dar. ¿sí? Esto no es algo que es obligación que siempre se mencione, ¿verdad? Del sujeto. A veces, en algunos casos, solo se queda con la primera parte de la oración. Y por eso es que están divididas. Um, entonces, en algunos casos, puede que solo se vea así. O city streets are being damaged. O sea, eso tiene casi que completo sentido. Ahora, para tener un sentido más eh, específico, si decimos, ¿verdad?, ¿Qué está causando? ¿Qué está generando esa situación? And here we have as a result of, como resultado de, ¿sí? as a result of heavy traffic. Um, here, we can place another example, not necessarily based on problems like this. We can, for example, say, I'm poor or I'm becoming poor. Okay. And wait, no. We're going to do something different because this is also sad. I'm spending a lot of money. As a result of the gas high prices. Okay, so I'm spending a lot of money as a result of the gas's high prices. I'm spending a lot of money as a result of the gas's high prices. Entonces, es otra una situación, ¿verdad? I'm spending a lot of money. Eso sería eh, la, la oración, um, sería la oración en pasivo, el decir que estoy gastando un montón de dinero. Sí, I'm spending a lot of money. Pero aquí no necesariamente yo estoy mencionando el por qué eso está sucediendo. Y el por qué will be as a result of gases high prices. Para eso entonces es que se utiliza, ¿verdad? Mayormente el passive voice. Mañana vamos a continuar con eh, el passive voice en el, utilizando el presente perfecto, que ese sería, ¿verdad? Otra de las situaciones o otra forma en la cual vamos a estar presentando de forma un poco más homogénea lo que sería el problema y... ¿Qué está causando ese problema al final de cuentas? Por ahora, we have run out of time, so we're going to have to continue tomorrow, people. Um, I only have to thank you guys very much for your attention and participation this evening. Um, I hope I will have you around here tomorrow and we can continue working. So thank you very much and have a very good evening. See you tomorrow. Okay, good night. Good night. Thank See you, you tomorrow, everybody. Okay, bye-bye.